Namaskar and good morning to everyone. I, on behalf of the university that we have and the hospitals, I would like to congratulate and convey our best wishes and gratitude for the opportunity to speak on this seventh uh, Ideal Village Conference, which is being held at uh, Banaras in the university in association with uh, Stanford, as well as Wheels Global Foundation and uh, Pan in IIT alumni. I personally felt that this was a great opportunity to connect uh, like-minded people for uh, the betterment of uh, rural societies. And uh, personally, I would like to uh, thank and uh, appreciate the efforts of uh, the co-chairs, uh, Dr. Sunny Anand and uh, Sundar Kamath, as well as the Ms. Professor Sudhir Jain, the Vice Chancellor of Banaras Hindu University, for this uh, wonderful event. Today's plenary session is about healthcare and nutrition. And this is an area that is very close to my heart individually, as well as one of the most important areas for social development. And this is where, as an organization, we are present in several states of the country, over 25 states and uh, over three union territories. We work in the field of uh, nutrition and also across seven to eight states, we work in the field of healthcare, rural areas especially. If you look at uh, India as a country, it is uh, the country of villages. And uh, where it is said that India lives in, in its villages, it was true 75 years ago and it equally holds true even today. As we all know, 65 to 70 percent Indians are located in rural geographies. And uh, that is where all the need, all the requirements are. They are the ones who engage themselves in uh, most of the rural economy, which contributes to almost um, 15 to 16 percent of our um, gross value add or GDP. But per capita income of every individual in the rural economy is far lower than those who work in the industry or in the services sector. It's almost one is to three is to five. It means an agriculturist or a person engaged in some kind of a rural um, economy, uh, one-fifth of somebody who is well-educated and placed in a services sector or industry, one-third of what one earns in, the, in a regular industry, the manufacturing kind of setup. So the first problem in the rural economy is that their income levels are very low and, and therefore they cannot spend on certain essentials of life like good nutrition, and good education and good health care. These sectors are those which are to be looked after by the government largely under various social welfare schemes. But being such a populous country, it is very difficult to cater to everyone in the rural geography. For instance, in the healthcare side, the WHO standard says that for every 1,000 patients, there should be one doctor, at least a general physician. And for every 300 patients, there should be one nurse. Whereas if you look at rural India, I'm not talking about India in averages because that's not the real picture. If you look at the rural India, you see that for almost 11 to 12,000 people, there is only one doctor. And that is again an average figure. There could be places where there's one doctor for 30, 35,000 people. And also on the nursing side, we find a similar um, situation where probably for seven or 800 people, there is only one nurse compared to a WHO recommendation of 300 people. So if you see the disparities between the urban and rural geographies, you will clearly see these disparities are even more pronounced when it comes to healthcare. And that is the reason why we went into healthcare. Most of the children of this country are born in rural India, naturally so, because most of the population lives in rural India. And these are the people who need all the help. The women in our rural India, they continue to labor in the fields till almost eight or nine months of pregnancy. They are the ones who do not go for any antenatal checkups. Almost 60% of these women never have access to even one antenatal checkup. It means like an ultrasound or a consultation or any advice from a medical expert. 75% of doctors are missing in our rural healthcare centers. And therefore, there is no possibility of these women accessing proper advice or proper education, nutrition or medication or even checkup. So from all these points of view, 
if you look at the maternal and child health care is one of the most important sectors in rural india and that's where we are trying to work you see if a mother is healthy the child which is going to be born is also going to be healthy but the statistics say that over the last two decades we have lost almost 1.3 million mothers and uh, close to 100 to 130 mothers per 1 lakh uh, live births they lose their lives due to pregnancy related complications or during the childbirth and because of hypertension or anemia or many other such complications, infections and things like that. So the idea is that to, if we take care of the mothers, then we can also take care of the children. And since most of the children are born in rural area, we need more healthcare focus in the rural setup. And with this intention, we have started several hospitals. We have four major hospitals in four states of the country at uh, Palwal, uh, in Haryana, in Chhattisgarh, Raipur, in um, Karnataka, Mudanhalli in Karnataka, in Maharashtra, Mumbai as well as in Yavatmal, and in upcoming hospitals are coming up in Uttarakhand and um, Jharkhand, Jamshedpur, Orisha, Telangana and so on. We also have built hospitals abroad to cater to the rural geographies of Sri Lanka, Fiji Islands in the South Pacific and also in Nigeria. Why are we doing that? It's because these are the places where people don't have access to quality health care. And even if um, they can access health care, quality health care, through private sector, they cannot afford it. And India spends only probably 5 rupees per citizen and when it comes to health care. Uh, the GDP is uh, probably 1.5 to 2% is what is spent on health care. Whereas we are a country which is fast growing. Our population increases 2.5 to 3 crore people every year. And out of them, the children which are born to such mothers who are anemic or who have several other complications, they are born with uh, diseases, deformities, disabilities or birth defects, especially congenital defects. So that is where we are also working in the field of congenital heart defects in children. And some of these hospitals are pediatric cardiac centers. In fact, we are the largest chain of pediatric cardiac hospitals in the country. And we do uh, numbers. Uh, we In the last 10 years, we have done more than 22,000 surgeries and procedures and more than two lakh consultations. The idea of uh, setting up these hospitals was because there was not enough facility for uh, pediatric cardiac care, especially in the rural areas. Uh, most of the hospitals are situation, situated in the southern in, in Indian peninsula and uh, in 60 plus centers, uh, not more than 25,000 cases can be done in a year, whereas more than 250,000 children are born with congenital heart defects, like a hole in the heart or the valve misfunction or uh, issues with their arteries and things like that. But they have nowhere to go because these costs, these operations cost a lot in private sector, in anything between three to five lakhs or even more depending on the complication. And how would a person from a rural area where his income, in most of the cases, as I said, is less than probably two or three dollars a day, how will they even afford this kind of health care? And so, Based on the principles as taught by Satya Sai Baba, these hospitals are absolutely free. There is no cost to the patient. They can walk in, they get entire treatment free, the mother and child consultations, nutrition, their medications, their entire uh, stay in the hospital, and even the, even the care for the attendants who come with the patients, it's all given completely free to ensure that there is no further burdening of uh, financial or otherwise to these poor, poor rural patients. Every year, more than 50 to 60 million Indians are pushed into poverty because of healthcare expenses. And 60% of these expenses are mostly out of pocket. While there are schemes from the government like Ayushman Bharat and various state schemes, they are applicable for hospitals in tier 1 or tier 2 or tier 3 cities, not in tier 1. And we don't have hospitals in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. In fact, recently I was reading an article where it was said that the finance ministry came up with this scheme where 50,000 crores were allotted for private hospitals to be set up in rural geographies, but not even one private hospital has come forward to pick up this loan scheme from the scheduled banks and set up a hospital because setting up the hospital is an expensive affair and rural people cannot afford it. So what is the model that we are talking about when it comes to betterment of the rural healthcare? I think the most important thing that we need to do is to create rural healthcare professionals because with technology, we really do not need that kind of infrastructure anymore. We don't need huge hospitals with huge equipments and heavy capital expenditure. But if we can think of preventive health care through 
point of care diagnostics through availability of trained professionals like we do have anganwadi workers we do have asha workers but many of them are not very well trained so a training program has been instituted by us we're trying to train them more than 2500 asha workers have been trained in maternal and child health care so they can uh, um, consult and medicate and take care of these women better at the same time through technology because this is a forum where a lot of iit alumni are also there and people from tech industry are there so my call to them would be to create um, rural healthcare technologies uh, especially if it, when it comes to preventive healthcare you know diagnostic healthcare so that the diseases can be detected early and preventive measures can be taken because once it is out of hand then the burden on the person in terms of finances and burden on our healthcare system which is already fragile in the rural areas is becomes too much to handle and that's where a gap is and we are looking at creating more healthcare professionals on from our side we have a university we are extending this education to now encompass medical education as you all must be aware that we have a national exam neat which one must pass in order to enter into a medical college but uh, 50% of the medical college seats are held in private medical schools and these are very expensive they could cost you anywhere between 1 crore to 5 crore rupees and the cost of medical education has only doubled in india in the last 10 years while it has reduced in europe and uh, other countries so the there are almost 20 lakh people 19 to 20 lakh children who write this exam and half of them even qualify but not even 10% of them get admissions in the medical colleges because of the number of seats that are less government has taken several steps to create more medical schools nursing colleges paramedical uh, training facilities yet it is not enough for the kind of country that we are which is also growing continuously we are one of the most populous countries now uh, 1.4 billion people so this is where the gap is you must train more professionals you must uh, use technology to reach out to the rural geographies and find innovative ways of bridging this gap between the healthcare need versus healthcare delivery in rural ecosystems and it has to be affordable it has to be accessible and also agreeable now that's an important point because if you don't make it agreeable to rural people in the sense it does not match their lifestyle their livelihoods their way indigenous knowledge of their own healthcare uh, systems the food that they the environment that they live in we cannot have one straight jacket approach to all the people we have seen that even when we dispense medicines people don't take it at times because they don't believe in it they have their own uh, local doctor or local consultant healthcare consultant or even a elder in the family who tells what to do i that's a good thing because we must include them we should we should make the healthcare approach inclusive by using the indigenous knowledge systems and uh, somehow try to find a synthesis between that and the modern medicine that is also an approach that we are taking in our upcoming medical college that we are instituting in mudenhalli in the chikbalapur district of karnataka and uh, i'm sure you will be delighted to know that this medical education is going to be provided absolutely free of cost to the rural needy people of course it comes with one condition that after the medical education they must serve in the rural geographies for as many years as they have studied in our own uh, medical education institutions so this applies to the nursing as well as paramedical courses uh, my effort is that in the next 25 years of our country's amrut kal as we call it and we are also looking at becoming a 5 trillion dollar economy shortly and probably 10 trillion dollar by 2032 but all this will remain a distant dream unless our demography what you call as demographic dividend is completely reaped and most of our demography is in rural areas so effort is to train more children more professionals healthcare professionals in rural setup so that they can stay back in the rural geographies and cater to the healthcare needs of the rural people and they have better understanding in terms of the culture the language as i said the indigenous healthcare knowledge systems and uh, the overall acceptance levels of people in the rural area so mother and child healthcare and also pediatric healthcare is those our focal point we are now planning to get into diagnostic services across the country and this is possible because we already are present in more than 25 states through our annapurna morning nutrition program and that is what is uh, the other side of the healthcare uh, discussion the nutrition and healthcare are not different from each other they are all connected because once you have good food food works like medicine as there somebody said if you don't eat food like medicine you'll eat medicine like food because if you don't take food correctly if 
taking food correctly does not mean you fill up your belly uh, we have to get the right kind of nutrition what we call as hidden hunger or micronutrition so in that field we started working and we find we found that this is one stop solution to many healthcare problems if you provide right kind of nutrition to the pregnant women or to the lactating mother or to the baby in, which is born from infant to toddlers to school going children uh, this will solve most of our healthcare problems it will improve attendance in the schools for the children who are getting morning nutrition in terms of a breakfast which is a well balanced breakfast which also provides uh, multi nutrients micronutrients which is important for the children's growth so this is a program also that has been launched under annapurna scheme and uh, now it's present as i said in more than 25 states we serve 1 million rural children every morning with a nutrition drink called sai sure and it has been uh, customized to the age of the child and also to the geography for instance this program ha- includes ragi and other millets in certain areas where that is the natural staple food so it goes with the biological system of the person whereas in certain other areas we also are looking at uh, giving it in wheat based or uh, malt based so there are various kinds of formulations which have been done very scientifically and approved by the food authorities to ensure that the micronutrients reach the rural children now we are serving almost 1 million children uh, across 11000 government schools uh, with the help of almost 6500 volunteers who are teachers of the schools as well as our uh, ngo volunteers and all these people together are taking care of 1 million children and our hope is to grow and cover at least 2 million children by 2025 need is much more in india alone almost 37 million children are malnourished and almost 0.8 million children that is 8 lakh children die every year under 5 death this is because of malnutrition you can imagine a country which is agricultural economy where 68% of the population is engaged in agriculture that country also faces a crisis of nutrition so we have food but we do not have nutrition and that is important and that problem is again a gap area which is being solved for a very little cost for of a morning nutrition drink we are able to see great impact in terms of development of the child uh, his physical impact in terms of the better hemoglobin more uh, weight and in terms of social impact because they go to school because they are attracted by this morning drinks drink nut- nutritional drink or a breakfast uh, as the case may be so they go to school early to receive this nutrition and that helps to increase the attendance more attention in the class so you see this one one solution of nutrition is solving many problems it is making the education budget work better it is making the healthcare budget uh, as i said work better or more efficient because you are solving many problems by nutrition giving nutrition unfortunately in india so far we do not have a national program which covers morning nutrition needs for children of the school especially government schools in recent uh, policy national education policy there has been a mention of providing some kind of nutrition to anganwadi as well as uh, primary school children but it does not cover the entire gamut of all the classes and i must point uh, out that the nutrition in girls especially those who are adolescent is even worse because they are going through a growth phase and they have menstrual cycles they lose a lot of blood and a lot of uh, iron and that is not replenished by the food that they eat now these are the girls which are going to become mothers in the future and therefore we came up with a special uh, formulation in sai show which is an innovation for adolescent girls so that they get the right kind of nutrition and when they grow into women who are going to conceive babies they are healthy women who are going to produce healthy babies and that itself will solve most of our country's problems so on healthcare and nutrition side uh these are the new things that we are doing preventive health care and our view is that in within next 5 to 10 years we want to set up one such diagnostic center across uh, in every taluka of the country so that would cover more than probably 6000 centers around the country but these are very uh, simple uh, centers they are on a rental lease model and uh, we have we will tie we have planned to to tie up with janaushadi model of the government so that the medical medicines can be dispensed by the janaushadi center and diagnostics can be done by our person and we are looking at training close to around 5000 such uh, professionals who could be school pass outs who could be early uh, you know uh, maybe in their undergraduation 
they can be trained there are many girls who can be trained that will create rural employment as well and more awareness and all these programs are going to be provided free of cost to the people who are who are wanting to get engaged in it so that is where we need all the help we have a model of samaja sarkar and samstha where the the samaja in the sense the entire society the corporates and the various other sectors of the society uh, should work hand in hand with the government the sarkara and samstha that is us uh, our ngos like us which are working for the development of rural india uh, having said this i must also say that this aspect of uh, rural development in healthcare and nutrition is is though it's very crucial but it's only one part of it you see healthcare is and nutrition is not just physical phenomena it is also mental when the mind of the person is healthy and happy and that's also important and what is the nutrition for the mind nutrition for the mind is right kind of education right kind of thought process right kind of um, uh, inputs and right kind of stimulation all this is also important we have so much of underutilized potential in rural youth and children they are very innovative very creative but they don't get the opportunity so unless we add education also to this scheme we will not be able to in- ensure the, the right kind of mental health in these children and the rural people and again education cannot be just accumulation of information or hard facts but it is about transformative process it is about developing the creative capacity of the child and thereby engaging the child completely in body mind and spirit and that kind of education is also crucial for improving the nutrition in the sense the mental nutrition as well as the health care because healthy minds are important for healthy bodies and in the recent times of covid we have seen how mental health has become the elephant in the room no more it can be ignored and especially in children and teenagers adolescents this has become a major issue so we also have educational programs for rural youth rural children which is to ensure that they get the same high quality urban education with all the technology that is at our disposal at the same time it is infused with moral cultural and spiritual principles without being religious this ensures that the children have an integrated approach to education and they have they grow as a wholesome personality in body they are strong and healthy in mind they are creative they are intelligent they are capable and in spirits they are happy and they are uh, enthusiastic to learn and to be contributing to the society's welfare so these are the things that are also being done we have across 25 schools and across uh, to 920 districts we have three university campuses again all the education is entirely free to ensure that more and more children enroll themselves in the educational uh, programs and they complete their education because the dropout ratio is very high in our rural con- uh, schools and not more than 25% of our entire country school children go into university education and in rurals it must be even worse but what i know is that not even 1% of the rural girls enter higher education so that's such a wasted potential imagine 50% of the uh, student population is girls and uh, and 1% of them in the rural area alone take to higher education so we are very proud that it is our university uh, we have 50% girls and they are doing very well in fact last year when we had the first convocation the girls who graduated more than 50% of them are were first generate literates it means their mothers have never gone to school forget about college their fathers have not gone to school forget about a higher education these girls are the first in their entire clan to enter the portals of a university and finish their graduation successfully we have internship programs for them to help in our rural campuses which gives them hands on experience they are then allowed to continue their post graduate studies with us it's again free and another innovation that we have done is that in post graduation we also provide them with stipends which will ensure that they are encouraged and motivated because there is kind of a financial incentive so the parents allow the girls to continue and not get get them married off too soon all these are important and we as there are many topics in our uh, seminar or conference including sanitation including agriculture energy and other sustainable uh, strategies truly these are not different from each other in the sense you can't look at them independently or in silos they all affect each other better infrastructure road more agri- better agricultural practices will ensure more nutrition in the rural villages better economy and that will ensure there is better educational facilities that will ensure better healthcare because people are more aware of what to eat what not to eat and how to look after themselves 
So everything is connected to each other. So I must uh, conclude with this uh, thought that while we want to improve rural India and we want to ensure that uh, you know per capita income in the rural uh, geography improves so that people have more money at their disposal and they can use it for betterment of their um, lifestyle or standards of living. But at the same time, I must tell that there are two aspects to rural development. One is the hard aspect one is, and the other is the soft aspect. The hard aspect is like the hardware of the computer system, which is the infrastructure. You must have roads, you must have sanitation, you must have electricity, you must have shelters, that is homes, you must have schools, you must have hospitals. But this is just the hard part of it. If you have all these, then you perhaps can improve the agricultural economy and you know it has a, a spiraling effect on the improvement of rural life. But at the same time, the softer aspect of culture is, must not be forgotten. Our country is known for its unique culture, especially in rural India. We, we, are, we have people who are very nice and sweet. They are people who are concerned about each other's welfare. They live together as a family. And they are not like the new age neighbors who do not even know the names of each other, though they live in the same apartment. So this is the kind of culture that India lives in. Most of the urban population lives in social media, but rural population still lives in society. And this human connect is something that is going, uh, that is getting deteriorated with the infiltration of uh, technology and in rural space as well. And the employment opportunities which are available only in cities that is causing rapid urbanization. And that is another fear. While we want to become a $5 trillion economy and probably uh, urbanization is the way. But at the same time, we must not forget that most of these youngsters leave the rural shores to go to an urban setup to get a job. And they give up their uh, traditional uh, knowledge systems, their practices like agriculture or other craftsmanship. And that's a kind of deterioration of the social fabric, the diversity that the country stands for. And I have seen it with my own eyes. We have seen the, the perils of uh, urbanization, especially closer to rural geographies where the youngsters have left their homes, leaving their old parents behind. And then uh, there's nobody to look after them and all their agricultural practices that the parents were having, that's falling low now. Uh, for example, in Mandya, I saw many of the sugar uh, making units are shut down because youngsters are not there anymore and old people are too old. Many of the farms are not being cultivated anymore because they can't afford a modern machine. These are all small farms. At the same time, they don't have youngsters to plow the field. The coffee production in Chikmagalur, for that matter, in Karnataka is falling. And the prices of price of coffee is always fluctuating. It's because we don't have enough workers in the field. So while technology can help, infrastructure can help, but at the same time, we must ensure that our rural people live in rural India. They don't leave rural India. In fact, I'm a big advocate of ruralization of India instead of urbanization of India. But what kind of rural India? A rural India which is at par in terms of its hard infrastructure when it comes to uh, comparison with the city. At the same time, the soft, the heart, the soul of the rural India should also be preserved. The people love each other, they are concerned about each other, they still value, follow the values and traditions, they still have that spiritual anchoring which is going, which has gone missing in the urban setup. So I do not want um, the rural geography to be turned into an urban uh, kind of a setup and we lose a lot of it. So provide infrastructure, fill the gaps whichever is available, work together in a collaborative way to solve these day-to-day -day problems, you see. But once these problems are solved, we must always be mindful that we cannot afford to lose our culture, cannot afford to lose the spiritual nature of our uh, rural fabric. And uh, if we do that, then I think this growth that may come because of as I said, infrastructure development or better practices, they, it won't be sustainable because sooner or later people would not be happy and that will affect their health, that will affect everything that they do. And again, we will be living in an unhappy country. In fact, there are surveys that are done about which are the happy countries to live in and I'm sure India doesn't figure in that. It's only because we still are we're fighting for the basics. At the same time, we are slowly becoming... Uh, insensitive to the actual culture, to the actual uh, spiritual roots that India always had, where we all lived in harmony. It is only our India which says Vasudeva Kutumbakam, we are all a family, the whole world is one family. That's our motto, one world, one family. 
and our rural families need our help so as people who are educated it's now our responsibility to educate those who can't afford it as people who are healthy it's our responsibility to ensure that somebody who needs the needs healthcare is provided in affordable or accessible way if we are sheltered we have clothes on our body we must ensure that somebody who does not have is also given this and in this way we will create a better world a better india a better rural india and i look forward to working with all of you in all these fields to improve healthcare and nutrition in rural india and apart from other social uh, sectors like agriculture education infrastructure and so on i invite you all to work together so that we can achieve more and uh, share and learn from each other's experiences and knowledge thank you very much for providing us this opportunity to share our thoughts and what we do and i look forward to working with all of you thank you again